Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to coast, This Week in America. When a review calls Identity, a Child's Cry by Olga Corneo Torres as a must-read, moving and eye-opening. Olga's story is brutal, sad, horrific, and tragic, but ultimately shows the incredible strength, resilience, and triumph of soul and character. Olga has dedicated her story to the many children who have suffered and continue to suffer abuse at the hands of those who are in a position of trust. She's sharing her experiences in hope of helping these children cope and will know that some understand. And with us on the program is Olga Corneo Torres, author of Identity, A Child's Cry, our special guest on the program. Olga, welcome to This Week in America. Great to have you with us. Thank you. This nice is, to be here. It's Rick. such an impressive and important topic, and you've done so well addressing it in the book that's receiving excellent reviews. And book at Amazon, the usual places. We'll give you that as we go through the program one question that so often comes up in people's lives in dealing with this, and you dealt with it as well, what can, what can you do when you're feeling depressed? Because it is difficult to, to, to get out of that, that period, isn't it? Oh, yes, it is. It's like the, having a thunderstorm just hit, hit the ground. As you feel the day coming and you feel like you're down, Instead of doing that, you need to look up for your faith, as, as in your faith, your spiritual life, your prayers, and also singing spiritual songs or whatever kind of music you like. Interesting. Yes, it is. And it's just like Mother Nature. It teaches us how it settles down how it picks up, and once it, it calms down, every, everything is back to normal. Now, are these tips that you, you used yourself? It sounds like you're familiar with these because you've struggled. You're helping people who are now struggling. You've gone through that period. Are these tips that you use to get through the, these periods of depression? Mother Nature is what helped me because... I'd listen to the birds and I would walk through the green trees and the flowers and and just smell Mother Nature um, with all that uh, you're thinking, okay? Well, yes, it's and, sort of like look around, isn't it? Enjoy, yes. yeah, stop. We, we get so busy, we don't really stop and focus on the beauty that's around us. And you're saying do that. Yes. It, it does have a very calming effect, doesn't it? Yes, yes. And it, and as soon as you start to calm down, you still, you still uh, just enjoy Mother Nature and the animals, you know, around you. Horses. Oh, I love horses, you know, and oh, yes. that helped me to cope down with um, my way of feeling. And my day was much better. You with know, feed horses it. and animals, even a cow. Well, yes, it's amazing what's there and we take it for granted. I enjoy feeding the squirrels and I suddenly find that they come for me when they see me out walking through the park. So have some peanuts as you go along to, uh, to feed the squirrels. So it's just enjoying what God has given us. That's right. That's right. And that's why I say search for your faith and ha and have him in your prayers and listen to spiritual music or whatever kind of music you like. You can relax. And if you need to jump up and down, go ahead and do it. Even cry. It's not going to hurt. Yeah, I guess if it makes you feel better, and sometimes crying is sort of a release, isn't it? It gives you a chance to let it all out and then sort of go from there, readjust, and go from there. The book we're talking about is Identity, A Child's Cry by Olga Corneo Torres. 
Uh, Corneo is C-O-R-N-E-J-O, Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S. Book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, usual places. I'll give you that as we go through the conversation. And a direct link to Olga's page on Amazon is on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Olga, when you talk to people, and maybe you went through this at a, at a time in your life, before you realize to, to sing, to enjoy Mother Nature, sometimes people will say, I'm depressed all the time. I just can't seem to snap out of this. What if they're in that state? In that state, you should um, search for, for help, especially if no one is around you. And the thing is that you can always go to the emergency room and they will help you. They will listen to you. Or if you see a cop coming by, say you're all alone and just wandering around and you can't get out of that and break the depression yourself, then stop a cop. Tell them your problem and they will listen to you. They'll take you to get help. And there's other places to go, um, but my first place would be the emergency room. Yes, it's something that people can listen to and they can work you through all of these problems. A good place to start if you're relating to what Olga's talking about or know somebody who's in this position is to get a copy of Olga's book, which is Identity, A Child's Cry at uh, Amazon, the usual places. And again, we'll have a direct link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. What was the inspiration in writing this book? And I say that because it had to be painful on some level for you emotionally to go back and to relive what you went through but you did that very candidly, very honestly to share, to help other people. What was the inspiration for writing Identity, A Child's Cry? My intentions are that I, since I was 14, I wanted to write this book. And it comes to a point in our lives when you realize who matters and who does not matter. And it's you, the person that's going through this depression, you matter like I mattered. I'm first and I see it that way. And so always, instead of worrying all the time, those people from your past, because you they, they belong in the past and there's a reason why they didn't make it to your path to your future i mean to your life well yes yes why they're they're really not there in a prominent role anymore and is is that sort of the key once you realize i am important i know my identity i am important is that sort of the foundation for really living a fulfilling life was that the case for you when you realized i am important yes and also, even if they are just your step uh, step relatives or if they are blood related, you have to remember, we are all children of God. And that's what matters in our lives, our faith. Look to him and look up and have faith in him. He might not be visible to us in person or appear in person, but he's there. The and have your faith be make yourself strong. Blood is thicker than water. That's what I've been told. And words like that can hurt you. But always remember who matters in this world related or not we are all children of god okay uh olga is with us on the program olga corneo torres that's c-o-r-n-e-j-o torres t-o-r-r-e-s 
The book that we're talking about is Identity, A Child's Cry. You'll find it wherever books are sold, and we encourage you to uh, to do that and to uh, to share this message. It will be a, a source of encouragement to you, and if you know of others, share that as well. Olga, what do you feel we need to do to help children that maybe uh, are being sexually, physically abused in their own home? How do we go about what helping them? Well, you know, very hard. Uh, but there are neighbors around. And go to a neighbor that you think you, you know and you can trust. And and speak to speak to them and tell them what's going on, but they're not always will they listen because in my experience, when I try to ask for help, they all just didn't want nothing to do with it because they were afraid of going to court and having to speak up for us. So, um. Just go to uh, to somebody, and maybe they can reach out a policeman or somebody in social services to help you. And maybe they can look in on this. I think that's so so wise. Once again, a police officer or someone who can maybe take charge of a situation if there's abuse within the abuse of any kind going on, physical or sexual and get you to the proper person to get the care that that you need. Talking briefly about your experience being abused by family members, you touched on that there, that uh, people were reluctant, apparently, within the family to get involved. Talk about that, what you went through, and how you finally broke away from that. Well, I did go out and and, uh, ask help from a lot of the neighbors that lived around me and they knew what was going on, but they would not help me. And then one day I went to a school teacher and that school teacher, instead of helping me, she called my father and that's the day the farmer saved my life. Um, it's, it's, um, he was drowning me, but the farmer came by. It was his ditch where he was, uh, his farm where he was irrigating, and he was drowning me in that ditch. But thank God for that farmer. He saved my day because the teacher had called the um, my father, and he picked me up from the school. You know, there's a great lesson there for people who may have somebody, a relative, a neighbor, somebody saying, uh, a teacher, somebody saying, help me, I'm being abused. And if you neglect it, something tragic almost happened in the case of Olga. And I'm sure that's not an isolated incident where something like that probably happens more often than, than we would like to believe. The book is Identity, A Child's Cry. Olga Corneo Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S. The uh, book available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all of the usual places. Going through that, where you are literally probably within minutes of losing your life and coming back to the point now where you're sharing the story, you're helping other people, how did you overcome that experience? That's th- th- coming that close uh, to having your life taken from you. I, I don't know how you bounce back from that. How, how did you? How I bounce back from that in having my, as I say, my my faith and praying, and also when I was in a foster home, um, the people there, the Garcias were very good to me, and they understood what I was going through. And the first day that I was with them, they left me alone, and they. So I could see how they treated the other children. And I was, you know, I was afraid. But even they told me one day, Olga, you need to change your colors. And I go, why? Because I was always wearing dark colors. 
And red, I, I turned to red, the colors of my clothes. And that brightens up your day. It helps uh, uh, bright, it, uh, brighten up your day and for a better life and, and with a smile on your face. And I watched the other children, how they were treated and how they all joined in on doing chores together and one set the table and the other and I still did would not even I didn't even want to sit at the table until I seen more by the next uh, by the third day I was responding I was I was more relaxed and I started joining in on helping them set the table and one did the spoons, one did the, and I just couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I was happy with how they were treating all of them. Yes. So. That probably wasn't something that you experienced a lot. You say happy. I can sense as you're talking about it, that those were the, the turnaround period there and happy times in your life. How, was it the first time you really actually felt happy in your life? Oh, yes. I, I, I even started to play with the children. I, you know, um, the times I went to the school, I was always quiet and just wanting to sleep and not wanting to cooperate in school because I was always just glaring out the window and wondering what's going to happen next. And what's going to happen next? And I was scared to go home when I was still living with uh, my, you know, my parents there. Yes. But, you know, after I seen all the changing and how they treated each individual, well, I felt human. And I started running and jumping and and I was singing and... Oh, I used to love to go to the church and help the nuns sing. St. <laughs> Peter's <laughs> Church. <laughs> you know, and it's, it's so fascinating. I, Yet yeah, the, the story there, and if someone, a few minutes left on the program, we're talking about the book Identity, A Child's Cry by Olga Corneo Torres, book available at Amazon, the usual places. Uh, a few minutes left in the program, you... You're a story of resilience, and I want to focus on that word for a second. There are probably people who are listening who who know of someone, maybe going through it themselves, who try to reach out for help and are rejected, as you were many, many times. What advice would you give them to keep looking for help? When you looked out and, and it didn't happen, you didn't give up. You kept You kept trying to get out of that spiral of abuse that you were in. What advice do you have for someone to to find that resiliency, to keep working until they're free of that? I keep on trying. I don't stop. I didn't stop asking others for help. And um, finally, my day came where I was saved by the farmer. And to this day, I don't know, you know, I don't know who he is, but I guess he's done passed away or something, but I've been to the farm because my sister walked me through the farm. She knew my half sister. She passed, she took me to the farm and I walked through the path of each of many uh, places that I was abused at with my father. And, um, that, you know, that even helped me more, was walking through the path I was and say, facing the reality yes. and facing the, I was lost in identity that I didn't believe my last name was Cornell. You know, and it, I, I came to learn, and as you blossom and grow, you start to understand more. There's a lot of things I didn't understand for a very long time. And now I do. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm up in age now. And I understand 
there was a reason for me being here to to help the ones that didn't didn't make it and the ones that can make it now keep on trying no matter what and you do that so well in in the story. And I got a couple minutes left here. I'll give you all the information on Olga's book before we wrap up here. But uh, what does this do now with current and past relationships? How have how have those been affected or shaped by this experience? Uh, how difficult was it with people from the past that you had to deal with, and in some cases, relatives that were maybe part of the problem? Oh, family can be very disappointing in your life because like they used to tell me that's their brother his brothers and sisters would tell me that was his their brother and i placed him in in a place for her you know that it was my fault that i placed him where he was at in a institution and then after that to prison um, and I said how can it be my fault I was innocent I was just a baby yes. I was just a little girl and it had been going on too long so I know my identity now because I walked through the path of even the last house I lived in with them so it's interesting how you went back and you did walk the path. You you say we can build a bridge and walk over the past and into a world of hope. And that, in a sentence, really yeah. sums up what you're talking about in the book, A uh, Identity, A Child's Cry, uh, where you answer so many questions. And none of these are real easy, easy to answer, are they? You struggle with all of these, but you kept persisting. The persistence yeah. is there. That resilience is there. What do you hope the takeaway is as people read this book? What is your hope for Identity A Child's Cry? My hope is that I can help some way in, in explaining that you we can do it. And and don't just lay out there and like if you're in the middle of a of, of the ocean and you're trying to reach the end, the edge of the ocean just to to get out you you need to um you need to just keep on trying and facing reality it happened go on with your life don't let it stay in one position because others tell you different you are you and you are number one. That's the way I see it. And I live to tell my story. And for those that didn't make it, I have prayed that they, they're they at peace. And those that are, are here and are in the, the center of all this abuse. Well, keep on going. Don't, don't turn away yourself find your strength build your strength for yourself be strong we're back to that word identity again the name of the book is identity a child's cry olga thank you so much for joining us on the program sharing the story and and helping so many people thank you for being with us thank you it has been and our blessed it's been our pleasure to have you on the program. Our guest has been Olga Cornejo Torres. That's C-O-R-N-E-J-O, Torres, T-O-R-R-E-S. The book, Identity, A Child's Cry. You'll find it at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places. A link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Uh, Olga, again, thank you for being with us on the program. A powerful message that you're sharing and helping so many people by, by being as candid and honest as you are in the book, Identity, A Child's Cry. We'll be back on today's program here on This Week in America right after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. 
Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bechet, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.